Hello everyone. Today let's look at the take-home assignment from DoorDash. DoorDash is an online food order and delivery platform. Delivery time is a key factor of satisfaction in the food and delivery business. It is important to both customers and businesses. So our task today is to help the businesses by building a prediction model. This model makes a prediction of the estimated arrival of your delivery Thus, DoorDash displays the expected time of delivery whenever an order is made. So we will predict the total delivery duration. It is the number of seconds from the order creation to the actual delivery time. Let's take a look at the data. DoorDash gives us historical data. It is a CSV file, which when open in Excel looks like this. All the money or dollar values in this file are in cents and all the time duration values are in seconds. Picking out some columns, we have the time of actual delivery and order creation stored as timestamps in UTC, the ID of the store and its cuisine category, the total number of items in the order, the total cost of the order in cents, and the number of distinct items included in the order. As DoorDash is a marketplace, we also have information about the availability and capacity of dashers at the time of the order submission. We have estimates from other predictive models. DoorDash is currently using this one. It helps the coordination of the delivery. These are the estimated order place duration, which is the estimated time for the restaurant to receive order from DoorDash in seconds, and the estimated travel time between the store and consumer in seconds. We'll learn more about the data set soon, but let's get straight into the solution. To begin with, let's import libraries. These libraries help us in loading the data, doing some basic manipulation and data visualization. Our file type is CSV, so let's read the data by using the read CSV function in pandas. Now we can glance at the first few rows of the data using the head function. Here you can see the data set in all the columns available and the first few rows. Now let's call on the information function or info function to ensure that we have the correct data type for each column. Looks like our main date time columns created at and actual delivery time are yet to be encoded as date time variables. So we'll convert that using the pandas function to date time. All right, because this is how our calculations for date and time will be easier later on. Let's begin with feature creation. We're ready to create new features, starting with the most important feature, which is our target variable. We've defined this earlier. It is the difference between actual delivery time and the created at columns. So we're working with seconds here. So let's first convert the results in seconds by using the date time package. So you first import the date time package and calculate the actual total delivery duration. Now we want good model performance, right? And it comes from using related features to our target variable or that represent the underlying relationships between our data. So we already have a pretty extensive set of features in our model, but from these raw features, we can engineer them further. By doing transformation, they will become more relevant to our problem. For example, it's helpful to have information on the number of available and busy dashers. Yet, this was captured at the time of order creation, and the total number of available dashers within a certain area will obviously change from time to time, right? So we'll create a new variable called busy dashers ratio to make this more comparable. It will focus instead on the number of busy dashers as a percentage of dashers available at the time of order creation. So this is how it goes. Now the hypothesis here is that when there is a high busy dashers ratio, that is when there is less dasher capacity DoorDash may experience. So DoorDash may experience a longer delivery duration. Now let's reflect back on the entire process. The delivery duration can be broken down into estimated order place duration plus restaurant preparation time 
plus estimated store to consumer driving duration. We've been given two pieces to the puzzle. The first one is the estimated time for the restaurant to receive an order from DoorDash. And the second one is the estimated time it takes for the store to deliver this to the consumer. These impact the delivery duration and we can combine this as non-preparation duration. So let's take a look at that. So the non-preparation duration is just going to be the sum of the two pieces of the puzzle that we just discussed. Now we're ready to prepare our data set for modeling. Let's start with the nominal data columns, which are market ID, store ID, and order protocol. A common way to deal with them is to one hot encode, but before doing so, let's check that it makes sense to do that. Otherwise, our feature set will explode. So let's check market ID, mm -hmm. store ID, Okay, so we can encode both market ID and order protocol, but definitely not store ID. We can do that easily with the get dummies function in pandas. So let's do that. And here, let me show you the dummies. Okay, that's order protocol and let's do one for market ID as well. Now we can forget the store ID and focus instead on store category. From our earlier inspection of the data, this column had missing values, which we can impute by determining the most common category for each store. We will do this by creating a reference dictionary. It maps each store ID to the most frequent cuisine category they serve. Now let's do that and try to fill null values wherever it's possible. So let's first create the reference dictionary. And then use a custom function to impute the values. The fill function here will take the store ID as input and return a value according to our reference dictionary. And then of course we're filling the null values. Now we can one hot encode this column as we did for the order protocol and market ID. Okay. a lot of cuisines. Let's clean up our training data set by removing the original columns and replacing these with the data frames containing the one hot encoded values. I'm also using a head function to give a preview. Now let's concatenate all columns together and then convert their data type to float for future model sake. So we've concatenated it all and we've got about 100 columns. Now let's take a look at our new data frame and its columns. So let's use the describe function here. And let's describe busy dashes ratio as well. Okay, looks like we had an issue with the busy dashes ratio column and there are some infinite values here because in the beginning we created busy dashes ratio by dividing total busy dashers by the total on shift dashers. When we divide a number by zero then it will result in an infinite value and if that number was negative then it will give you a negative infinite as a result. So here, the code aims to find any value where it is not finite by using three nested functions. It aims to find infinite values in our dataset, like in busy dashes ratio. So let's do that. Now, we will replace them with NAN because first, infinite values may cause miscalculations since we are working with numbers. Now, this would be a good time for me to give you a brief explanation of some broken value types in Python. NAN means not a number. Also, none in Python is used to define a null value or no value at all. And second, we will replace them with NAN because that helps us to remove them quickly. Now it's time to replace them with NAN. Let's do that. And let's check the shape of our data frame. Oh, it looks like there is an uppercase issue over here and let's run that again. Okay, we have a hundred columns in our data set 
big data sets always help your model, right? Yet it might have a few drawbacks too. Having too many predictors also might slow us down. Also, it might cause collinearity. Now, what is collinearity? That we will check out in our next video, part two of the solution to this data project, in which we will cover removing redundant values and collinear functions and multicollinearity. So stay tuned for that and thanks for watching. See you there.